President Obama wraps up his three-day visit to Israel today. Hassan Rouhani took the oath of office today. Turkey's Taksim Square has been engulfed in chaos. Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi is out. The stalled peace process is moving again. Designating Hezbollah's military wing. It appears deadly chemical weapons were used. A deal between Iran and the West. Fears of a resurgent al-Qaeda in Iraq. What separates the experts of the Washington Institute is their depth of knowledge and expertise. They know. They know languages, history, culture, politics. They understand the motivations of the leaders. They understand the conflicts. They know what's going on the ground. And from that knowledge come ideas and solutions. Ideas that matter. Ideas that are tested. Ideas that seek the truth. And then that puts them into action. A critical forum for public debate and dialogue. Very interesting report by the Washington Institute for Near East Policy the other day. According to a recent report from the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, my team and I benefited greatly from the consultations with Dennis Ross and others at the Institute. What I hear from senior Gulf officials and particularly Saudi officials is that they have a deep concern about what the United States is doing. They fear fundamentally that our pursuit of negotiation with, with Iran on the nuclear issue is so important to us, we are so determined to avoid any conflict with Iran, that we're turning a blind eye to what the Iranians are doing in the rest of the region. We're not looking at what they do in Yemen, in Iraq, Bahrain, Syria, or in Lebanon. And from a Saudi standpoint, that's actually more of an existential threat. The nuclear issue is seen as an instrument to promote regional hegemony. I asked at one point one senior Saudi, why are you so silent on the joint plan of action? And he said, well, why do we need to be saying anything? The Israelis are much louder than we could ever be, and they're much more effective. What I've found recently from a trip to Ramallah and uh, Abu Dis in East Jerusalem, there's actually a pretty big divide on the Palestinian side between the elite and the street. But it's not what you might think. It turns out that the street is actually more moderate, more flexible, more willing to make compromises to reach a deal. You can see that on many issues, whether it's about recognizing Israel as a Jewish state and whether to resume the peace talks. If Abbas, as a leader, wanted to, he could find room to make compromises and carry the Palestinian street with him. I just had the opportunity to spend time with uh, officials in Paris and Berlin, and they had two sets of concerns. The first is on the flow of foreign fighters to Syria, and the second is on the uh, increasing uh, international global activity of Iran and its proxies. You have weak regimes throughout the region with weak counterterrorism authorities in Syria drawing recruits from all over the world. Much shorter radicalization process, thousands of people who've gone through Europe and already hundreds who've returned home. You also have on the other side of the conflict in Syria, Iran and Hezbollah propping up the Assad regime. But you also see them doing things around the world, carrying out surveillance of Jewish, Israeli and American targets. Of course, the attack in Burgas, Bulgaria and other attempts from Cyprus to Nairobi to Thailand, Johannesburg. These are the two sides of the coin for terrorism issues today. When you go inside of Syria, every hilltop, every crossroads is a different uh, armed group um, and with a different checkpoint. The country I lived in no longer exists. The opposition has not given Assad the kind of opposition that he would like to decapitate, which is quite easy for him to do, but a whole host of groups with different agendas. And that means that the Assad regime is unable to retake those areas very easily. The international community has put emphasis on negotiations first and then an imposed solution. Instead, we need something from below that represents the different parts of Syria. It's hard to see how the opposition and the moderate elements of it join with the regime without the Assads and the Makhloufs stepping Aside. It's also hard to see how the regime would accept the opposition as long as there are so many extremists among its ranks. But until you do that, until you work it from the ground up, I, I don't think there's going to be a settlement in Syria.